Hey, it's Jeff Gibbons here, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can take your external synthesizers and hook them up to machine. So it's going to be a bit of a basic video, but I just want to get people started on this and walk them through some of the difficulties I had when I was trying to get everything set up. So what I've got here is a little song, and you're hearing some drum kits from the machine expansion packs. I've got like Meteoric Rides and a couple other expansions in there. And then everything else on this song is external synthesizers. So let's just have a quick listen to that. For starters, if you're going to hook up a bunch of synthesizers, you're going to have to have a, a way for all of the synthesizers to be heard at the same time. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do that. You could do one synth at a time, but the way I've got it set up, I've got a bunch of synthesizers all fed into a little tiny mixer over here. And this would be a way to get around having an audio interface that doesn't have more than two inputs on it. So what you could do is take all of your synthesizers, and you could feed them into a mixer and then take those into your machine inputs, your audio inputs. Or if you have an audio interface that has more inputs on it, you could easily hook them up to the different inputs on your audio interface. And so I've got a mixture of both happening right now. And the thing I like about having them go into my audio interface and using the direct monitoring feature of my audio interface, I can hear my, my keyboards whether or not there is an audio track or an audio group in machine that's activated with monitoring on. So for my Juno group, what I've done is I've got my patch all set and this synthesizer doesn't have the ability to store patches. So it's super old school. There's no MIDI on it. So what I do is I record it as an audio module in machine. And later on, I might turn that into a sampler so I could do some of the sample editing to that if I wanted to, or I would just leave it as an audio module if I want to just want to play it back. Go over here, make a group. And then on your first sound, I'm going to click over on the left-hand side right here, this little waveform looking thing. So there's my Juno right there. I can see it's coming in, but I have to make sure I choose the proper source. So right now I've just got a mono connection and that's going into inputs 4R on my Claret 8 Pre down there. So that's the last input. And, uh, and that's just the output of this little mixer. And then when I press record, I'm going to be recording the sound of the Juno onto my track. I'm going to keep it on loop recording mode. I'm going to keep the length to eight bars and set the target to take. And this monitor button right here is the way that you would hear the sound of the synthesizer if you didn't have direct monitoring set up with your audio interface. So if you are having difficulties finding that, just go to your audio track and start with the monitor on, and that will allow you to hear the sound of your synth as you're playing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press start, and then I'm just going to press record on my track. So here we go. And that's it. So I've just recorded my audio. I've got it here as an audio module. So if I go over to my machine here, and if I press plugin instance, we can see that this sound is an audio module. And you can see the audio right in the sequencer itself on the software. Everything looks good to go. I could then go and turn this into a sampling module if I want, just by clicking right here on the 4D encoder, turning that into a sampler. And then now I could go to sampling and edit this little recording and do all sorts of other fun stuff with it. But that's a subject for another video, so go check out my sampling video if you haven't seen that one. I'm going to turn it back into an audio module, hit load, and then we see it pop up back on the track. Okay, so the next synthesizer I'm going to show you is a keyboard like a DX7. This DX7 has basic MIDI connections uh, in and out, and, um, and then all sorts of other things you can do with the DX7. It's a really cool synthesizer, totally different method of synthesis. So the first thing I would do is make a new group, and on this group, on the first sound slot, I'm going to set my MIDI settings so that 
I can actually record MIDI out of this device as opposed to just recording audio like we did with the Juno. And of course the benefit of that is I could play everything and then I can go back and do all of the wonderful things that MIDI affords us like quantizing and changing the key, um, fixing wrong notes, all that kind of stuff. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this group right here and I'm going to make sure the sound, the input for this sound, is from the Claret MIDI input. That's where this DX7 is hooked up to. Then I'm going to go to the output and I'm going to set it to output to the Claret as well. So now when I play something, so now let's play that back. So that's it. Now I can record everything I want right here. I can fix the notes. I can quantize them with machine. I can quantize them in the software. I can do all of those things with that we can do with MIDI. I could take all of these notes and move them up the octave. You know, I could slow the tempo down. All of that stuff. It's just going to send the MIDI information out at, uh, at a slower tempo or whatever. So there's my MIDI information, maybe I'll quantize that 50% and one more 50%, which is like 75%. What you're going to need to do is turn this MIDI information into audio. And so what I like to do for that is make a whole new group just for audio. And I'm going to call this group, I'm going to call this group Clav Audio. What I'm going to do on this first sound slot here is click on the audio button one more time and this time I'm going to take the audio from wherever it's coming into my interface. And in this case it's actually not going through the mixer, it's going through the audio interface. Let me show you what that would look like. I can see it's coming into input 4 on my interface, which is also mono, and I could click on the input and it's actually not going to be input 4 right here, it's in to right, which is the one, two, three, fourth input down. That's how it's showing up on my interface, might be different on yours, but just be aware of that. Um, the way these things show up. So I've got start, loop, eight bars, take, and monitor off. Everything looks good there. And so now all I have to do is press record. And what's going to happen is the MIDI information is going to go from this group, this group E1 right here. It's going to go to the DX7. The DX7 is going to make some audio. And on group A2 here, I'm going to record that audio. Don't forget to press the start button. So I press the start button and then press record. And here we go. And that's it. There's our DX7 audio. Now it lives as audio inside my machine project, which is perfect. And we can go on and start playing with some other devices. Okay, so with the Korg Minilog, this device is one of the synthesizers that Native Instruments has released a preset for. So where you need to go is to the Native Instruments website and just look for the machine downloads. So if I go over to the downloads right here, I can see download machine MIDI presets for external devices. So you click on that, download that, and install it. There's a little PDF in there to show you how to install it. That'll show up if you go into machine preferences and go to library and then to user, you'll see your external devices will show up right there and then just hit the scan button and it should show up for you. And then what you need to do every time you're working with Minilog is just make a group, go to your first sound, on the left hand side click on the user category and then I like to go to sounds and then over here click on where it says ex instruments external and then of course we can see the Minilog right there so double click on the Minilog and what that's going to do is it's going to give you a set of macros. So before I do anything, once you've got your mini log set and you've chosen your mini log uh, external instrument preset, what you need to do is make sure you have MIDI set up properly. Now I got to be honest, I hooked this thing up by USB. I could not get it to work. So I'm not sure what I was doing wrong. I make sure I had USB and MIDI set on the mini log, but it just was not working for me, doing all sorts of crazy stuff. 
And uh, so what I've got instead is MIDI cables connecting to the mini log. And I find that's working just fine. So if I go over to the MIDI settings, I go to my output and I choose destination. And then in this case, it's the Claret 8 Pre MIDI connection again. And then if I go over to the input, I see that I've got also the input needs to be, I can set it to all if I want in this case, but I make sure the output is to Claret MIDI and that's going to go to this device right here. Now I can play this synthesizer from the machine. I can play it from this keyboard right here or anything else that I've got hooked up via MIDI. I'm now controlling the mini log. So we've got our connections all set up properly. Let's go have a look at what this preset gives you. So if I click on where it says, make sure I'm on sound and click on the macro right here, you can see a whole bunch of pages of parameters that get assigned to these eight rotary encoders here on your machine. So if I go over to page one, I can now see things like filter cutoff. So let's try playing, uh, up, up, let's play with the filter. So all of this kind of stuff can now be recorded onto our track. So we can use machine to control any of these control change parameters or CC parameters. So they're already set up for us. Everything on this device is mapped out or most of the things on the device are mapped out up on the top. So I can see all of these different macros. I can go to amplitude and I can start playing around with the attack. I can play with the release. So I'm going to go to this bass patch and re-record the bass line. So here we go. I'm just going to start it out, make sure my pattern's eight bars long. Okay, so there is my base information played on the mini log. Of course, I can go back and quantize that and fix the velocities and things like that. Maybe start writing in some changes. And by the way, let me just show you, if you were to do some changes on this guy, what would that look like? Click on the macro button right here. And then what you're gonna need to make sure you have turned on is this auto button or this automation button. And if you turn that auto button on, what you'll be able to do is record the changes of some of these macros. So either you hold it down and make your change, or you press shift auto to, to leave that locked. And with that locked now, any changes I make here will start showing up in the lanes beneath your MIDI information. So let's go over to this and just try messing around with this. It's gonna sound like garbage, but that's fine. Here we go. Auto is on. <laughs> So you get the idea. I've just recorded some automation in there on that filter. Let's have a listen to it. All right, that sounds great. I think I might just keep that. There it is. I've just recorded CC43, uh, which is actually this filter cut off on this patch. And let me just delete that because that does sound terrible. And I'm just gonna reset this patch just by changing the patch back. But that is how you would record any of this macro information that you want on this synthesizer in real time and have the ability to go through and tweak it afterwards, uh, draw things in manually, all that kind of good stuff. And with the micro Korg, what I need to do is make my own preset. So I've done that on this first patch. So what I did is I went to the old manual for this device and I found the page in the manual that lists off what each control change information does. And the cool thing is we're gonna be able to control things on this keyboard that we can't control easily with the knobs on the front. We can now control with the knobs in machine. So what I did is I went and looked at things like oscillator one and choose which wave. So in order to choose which wave oscillator one is actually using, you have to access control change number 77. Okay, that sounds complicated, but let's go back over to machine for a second. And then let's look at a way we could do that. I'm gonna start from scratch. I'm gonna click a new group just to show you from scratch. So the MIDI on this one is coming from a little MIDI interface that I've got. 
doesn't matter if it's coming from machine or wherever it is. But I need to make sure, just like I did before on this new group, that my sound, if I click the channel button right here, the output for the MIDI is going to be this little MIDI interface. So I click the USB interface, but make sure the input is also, or I can set all so then I can play it from any one of my keyboards. And by the way, if this is still not working for you, another thing I noticed, go up to Machine 2 Preferences and make sure under the MIDI tab that your inputs are all checked off and that your outputs are all checked off. That sort of held me up there for a little while. Make sure those are all checked off so that you can send MIDI in and out through these different connections. Let's make a new scene just to check this that it's working. Let's press record. So that's working. MIDI's coming in and out. That's great. Let me just click on this button right here so we can see the notes I played. Now we need to make some macros that can control the different control change parameters on this synthesizer. So in order to do that, all I have to do is click on the macro tab right here and then start below automation where it says pages. So I click on pages and here you'll see the ability to start adding knobs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what to put on knob number one right here. And I'm going to choose under select, I'm going to go to MIDI, and then I'm going to go to that control change 77. And that was from my manual right here, oscillator one control change 77. So that gives me the ability to choose the oscillator type that is on oscillator one. So I've got this right here. I might as well call this oscillator one wave. Oops. Here we go. So now if I go back to automation, we'll see control change and we'll see oscillator one wave. So let's try playing around with this. So you can hear it cycling through the different waveforms. If I look here, it actually tells you goes from saw to square to try based on these numbers. So once you hit 18, you're into a saw wave and so on and so forth. Not something I'd probably want to automate, but it does give me access to a parameter that's not easily accessible by the front of the microcorg. So let's add another thing. Let's add something a little more obvious, like a filter. So let's go to the second one, and I go to select MIDI, and then I'm going to go to the filter, which is, if I look over here, filter and cutoff is 74. So I go back over here, and I choose MIDI, and then I go to 74, which is right here. And then I'm going to call this filter cutoff. So now I go back to my automation. Let's try playing around with that. So you can hear it controlling the filter cutoff, just like this knob would on the Korg itself. Now I'm controlling it from machine. So you go through, make all of your macros that control any of the control change information you want to control with the synthesizer. Now you can do that all through machine. And then you can go over to your sound and you can go right click your sound. You can now save that as a preset. So every time you want to work with the microcorg, you just pull up that preset. You've got all your macros ready to go control the synthesizer way deeper than you could easily control this device from the front of the device itself. It's a really cool feature. So don't forget if you want to write in some information, uh, something like a filter, So now I'm going to go through and write some filter information and let's have a listen to that. Um, make sure this auto button is on. Remember, hold shift to lock it. And then now I press record and let's make sure I'm on my macros right here. And now I'm going to play around with the cutoff. So here we go. And that's it. So now I could go in and I could expand this lane. Let's make this a little bit bigger. And I could go through and I could start editing this information, get it really precise if I want. And don't forget to press the E button to turn between the arrow and the pencil when you're in the sequencer. So I press the E button and now I've got this. Right now, because the snap is on, it's doing really blocky eight triplets uh, points down here. I want to get much more precise with this. So I need to make sure the grid is turned off. And then now I can draw basically wherever I want. So now I could draw that in. 
You could do something like more dramatic, something like that. You get the idea. So this is controlling control change information from machine. Make sure that auto button is on and then go edit that down in the lane below. You can reset everything just by right clicking, go reset modulator, start from scratch. And that's it. Don't forget once you've recorded something as MIDI here in machine, you then have to record that as audio. So really cool ways to control hardware synthesizers with machine, with the rotary encoders, get way deeper into your synthesizers than you can on some of the front panels of these devices and work with hardware in a system that is that we're so used to working with just software. It's really exciting. So hopefully that clears up questions for you. Hopefully you can go and start working with your hardware synthesizers that might be gathering dust in your studio. Have fun with them and uh, you know just working with hardware is just kind of a different thing. Like it's it's super convenient to work with software but you play with hardware and something else happens you know it's like using a different part of your brain or something like that so make sure you go check out my other videos i've got lots of videos on there and i'm going to keep posting more especially once the fall kicks in here and hit the subscribe button thanks for watching